Hello everybody and welcome to Green Star Trading with me Tom. All views, opinions and ideas expressed in this video are my own and do not constitute financial or trading advice in any way. Right, a little change of pace here on YouTube today. We're going to go back and look at some stocks we haven't looked at in quite some time. So we're going to be looking at PayPal, we're going to be looking at Facebook or Meta, we're going to be looking at Tesla and we're going to be looking at Barbar. Now three of these stocks have all been in severe corrections and could argue are near well near the lows as and when they arrive and uh, one of them tesla is still basically although having sold off depending on your perspective you could say a considerable amount but relative to the overall move up over the last few years is still trading very much around the highs so i know you guys are probably chomping at the bit to get a bitcoin update don't worry it's coming this week if you're a patreon you'll be getting the live stream tomorrow on wednesday i'll probably be at it for another four or five hours and i have no doubt that we're going to go over bitcoin and crypto for several hours tomorrow um given the you know the very strong sell-off we've seen and uh, the uh, invalidation of the primary count we have lots of ideas we've been talking about on the discord i have several ideas but also i have the alternate count obviously which has been there for a long time so we're going to work together to get things finalized and then you guys here on YouTube will get an update as and when I've collected my thoughts because uh, I'm not going to just rush into reassigning a primary to something until I see, well, until I gain some kind of clarity. So if you feel like you want to, you can't wait and you want to join that live stream tomorrow, then maybe sign up to the Patreon today and you can join tomorrow. I'll be posting the link on the Patreon tomorrow morning and it'll be going on starting around 1 p.m british standard time and uh, the usual suspects will be showing up no doubt i always timestamp it and record it and get it out the following day for those who are not on the same time that i am and they can catch up then but anyway let's get on with the video all right so we're going to start here on paypal first and uh, it has been a mightily impressive sell-off now i have a couple of various counts of how to get into the high here and a couple of accounts of how to count this correction. Okay, one of which is probably going to get me lambasted, and you know people are, are going to laugh at, and that's fine. You know, I'm not saying it is, you know, that it has to be that. I'm just saying structurally, it, it makes sense. It doesn't necessarily make sense in other regards, but we can talk about that later. First things first is let's just look at what we've given up since the high. So price terms percentage terms okay. as of the close yesterday we were down 74.31 percent that's a big sell-off now my gut tells me that that after you know coming up from 2015 now we could label this intermediate into primary or we could label it primary into cycle so i'm happy either way but some kind of very large weight degree correction that's very severe in price is underway and could be concluding soon so cycle wave degree i'm fine i'll label it that and stick with that for the moment five into cycle one and uh, you might say well that's an awfully quick correction for a cycle wave yes but as i've stated many a times and it's not a rule in elliott wave but it's a, it's a guideline which is what you don't give up in price you make up for in time well we've given up a lot in price so the severity of a correction um, is as much to do with the wave degree the scale of the correction of the wave degree you're at as it is to do with time so if you were to have a very long and drawn out multi-month multi-year correction at cycle degree or you can have an extremely violent vertical correction and it would appear that's what we've got on here and it's not alone so that tends to be where I'm leaning at the moment. Now, if we look at what it's done in terms of retracement, what we're going to have to do, just to make sure we really pick out the start of the chart here, get a re, get the fib retracement tool, come back to the lowest low, let's come up to the height, and come off of log, and we can see that, unsurprisingly, being as you know, we started pretty, we started the chart at 30 bucks we're down through the 78.6. So in terms of retracements, we've given up 74% in price, but we're over 78% as a retracement of this whole move. So in linear terms, there's nothing really to call out here as support from a Fibonacci perspective, other than the 89% retracement down here. So we could have, believe it or not, 
a little further to go. Now we could have bottomed, but we could also have just a little bit further to go. Come down here to this 89% retracement level. And we're just going to lock that in place, and we'll label that in a little while. Now, as far as the volume goes, you'll notice how this is the highest reading of volume we've had. This is the weekly chart. Right? If we just mouse over it, we can see that. Let's take some of the larger candles we've had before. So, like maybe this one here. That reads 97.536 million. This one reads 144.146 million. But the candle we, I think, rough basically capitulated on, um, or the, uh, the volume reading, it was 259, which is, you know, huge. And I've often said, we were talking about it in the live stream just the other week when I was analysing half a dozen stocks for people, how... You can get the capitulation reading on the volume and then you get one more low wherever it comes on declining volume and the strength of the correction is over here but you've just got a little bit more structural work to do before you bottom and start your way out of here so that seems to be on course at the moment and if we look at our rsi and uh, we're going to come back to down to the daily time frame here where i've scaled this and if we look at the RSI and the MACD you can see that we have bullish divergence between the lows here and on the MACD as well while the prices continue to set lower lows okay and we've set higher lows and we've done it on declining volume so we're approaching a bottom yeah. not a great insight really having given up almost 70 you know having given up 75 percent of the stock it kind of makes sense that we are approaching the lows but we can still fall from here another let's say we came down to the 89 percent retracement that's still another 23 percent 23 24 percent from here so you know um i'm very frequently saying and reminding people that you don't catch a falling knife from a trading perspective if you want to trade this and you want a tight risk management tight stop and you want it to be a structural stop you wait for this to give you an impulse wave off of the low five waves up with support from momentum and volume and then you look for a retracement to the golden ratio to 50 of the golden ratio and you look for a reaction to set up the trade from there and that will give you the tightest stop you can get structurally right a manageable level of risk that's what we call the sts on the discord and on the patreon now that's not present here it's still falling okay but if you are a long-term investor of which i'm also a long-term investor as well as a trader um i would not scoff at a 74 percent discount from the highs if you want to buy this and you want to hold this five years or 24 months even um this is not a bad time to start accumulating i would argue okay so we've seen how far we've come back. So let's have a look at the chart in log. We've got the golden ratio in log, which we have yet to reach. So I think that's worth marking because that gives us a higher finish, which is closer currently to where we are. So let's mark that as well. I'll lock that in. Um, so I will put that in there. Sorry, I'll lock that in place. And I will put a price marker there. We'll correct that in a moment. And the price at the one below. Okay. Now I've got to remember that the reading for the gold line was in log. And it gives us 72.99. As you can see, that's much closer to us. Much, much closer. We're only another 7.8% drop away from finding that golden ratio. And it does seem to coalesce quite nicely with um, some structural support coordinates well here we got 73 18 lock that and 60 spot 88 eight. want to try and be precise and then we'll get into the actual Elliott wave counts once we've done this I'm just going to relabel these slightly differently Golden ratio. So can we highlight and then change the text to twerp? I'll get there in a minute. Oh, does that not work doing that? Yeah, it does. It's changed it. Okay. Just doesn't display it here, it displays it there. Whatever. In log with a space. <laughs> 
There we go. We'll get there in a minute. Don't worry, I won't bite you. And then I'll put this one is not. This is in linear. So that will help me differentiate. So there's a couple of targets on the board where we might go lower. Okay, now we may be done. Right, we've got potentially five waves in here, but like I said, until we see a reversal, we don't know. Right, so now let's have a look, pull it back into log and have a look to see if there's any real structural support around here. You've got a bunch of lows, previous support, which could act as support again I would rather have seen the price settle on some prior resistance to be honest which there isn't really a lot of structural resistance here but we have got some lows and we've got some volume in the volume profile down here as well as you can see a bit of a gulf way between that and the next area okay so now let's talk about the actual Elliott wave ideas we've got here so Completing the count at the dominant high up here in 22nd of June. Let's just put these as some separate targets in a folder. Turn those off now. Right then, so a double zigzag. Now this is. There's problems with all of these counts because of the way they subdivide. Okay, what I had originally was like one, two, three, four, looking for five in an A, then a B, then a C. Well, that never materialized, so we either end up with an incredibly long A, B, and a C as a single zigzag, which strikes me as very peculiar, or we can break it down into one zigzag, tiny X wave, and then another zigzag. So about the best I can do here before I go on to my other idea, which is the one I think is going to stir, stir some Elioticians up a little bit, and I wouldn't blame you if it did. I'm not going to assign primary here today. Either way, I will wait to see this thing turn around before I rush in. So that's from a trade. That's the trade in me talking. Remember, as I said earlier, that is not necessarily. The investor speaking who is quite happy picking this thing up in a long-term portfolio a little bit of a time around these lows i have no objection to that at all okay. who would have thought you'd be getting this kind of a discount you know 12 months ago two three four five so you can see it subdivides nicely this last section doesn't subdivide too cleanly, but there's an argument for one, two, three, four, and five. Bigger, slightly disproportionate four, but maybe that's one, two, and we've still got three, four, and five to come. That would take us to our lower targets, right? So that's an option as well. Let's add those to that folder. Let's just have a quick look at the relationship in linear terms between these various moves. So if we take the what well, is obviously a very extended C that goes to the two six one eight. Now I'm fine with that. Extended C's, which you know, zigzags tend towards parity, but that doesn't mean it's a rule that they finish at parity. And now the second move, we can see how we have a bit of a structural issue because if we take a one to one. Uh, here we are. We get 20 bucks. Now, I'm not saying it can't go that low, but if we do go that low, we've invalidated an impulse wave of one into two. We've gone beyond where we began. Right now, given how we come into a low in the PayPal chart and then start an impulsive wave high, I really don't want to see that low give way. Uh, because none of this count really matters at that point. We can't legitimately call it a wave two if it retraces before wave one began. So I would like to see it come in before then. So on that note, we should come in and mark the absolute low. Right. 
Alright, which you can see is still a ways away, but we couldn't do one to one again on this zigzag and it'd still be valid. Alright then, so, but we could get a smaller ratio, there's no reason why we can't get um, 61.8 here of this zigzag, that could do it with 5 wave structure complete. So that's one way of looking at it. So now that we've done that, we'll save the chart with these little updates, we'll get rid of a double zigzag. So let's now deal with an alternative count, we're going to turn off that long term count, and I've counted up again, but this time I'm looking at it differently. Here we go. What if this is a gigantic flat pattern? So I can already hear the screams from the editions out there saying that's a rather large, and that's putting it politely, C wave of a flat top. Yes, I'm aware of that, and I'm not saying it's in any way normal. I'm just saying that from a structural perspective, this actually subdivides cleaner than trying to either get a single five wave move into an A, which if I was, which I neglected to mention, I don't agree with, because if that's A and that's B, how the hell do we get a C in here? There just isn't the room, unless it was awfully small or even truncated, which we really didn't want to see. So it's either a zig double zigzag or it's this. This is a flat pattern where we've got three here from the actual high free to at least 90% retracement so free free and then one two three four five and it's a free free five do I think it looks reasonable absolutely not do I think it would qualify as you know the normal behavior for a flat not within a million miles of it but structurally that's what it looks like and that's really all I'm going to say. That divides better as a single impulse than it does as a double zigzag. And then at that point, you have to ask yourself what's more reasonable. Is five waves down into an A, B and a C taking us to zero and killing the stock? Is that more reasonable based on just usual structural relationships? And not, you know, is that more reasonable than a massively extended C in a flat? You tell me. So I would argue that the li more likely count from where it's gone is the double zigzag, which is this, and we just have to live with this little piddly X wave and it's two zigzags connected together. That, from a wave relationship point of view, makes the most sense. But from a structural point of view, in terms of how it appears, how it looks, the flat actually looks. Okay, there's... It doesn't look better in terms of wave relationships. Wave structure is cleaner, 335, than in the double zigzag where it's not so clean. But the double zigzag surely must be more likely. So we're not at, we might be at the lows, we might not be. They can't be far off. We've seen the capitulation spike in the volume and the lower low on lower volume. We've got bullish divergence building up underneath. We are so far below the 250 day exponential moving average. You know, it's, I mean, that itself to me, the sheer scale of the breakdown suggests that this was a one. Whether this was a top or this was a top, this was a one. And this is the first major cycle wave for PayPal holdings since it came to its IPO. And this is the first major correction. Okay. And then off to new highs and much further in the future. Following the basic principle of there being five waves. You know, five larger ways and this is one and this is two so we're going to leave PayPal there and I'm going to side with the double zigzag for the moment but I just wanted to bring up that idea of it potentially being a flat with a very skewed C wave so feel free to let me know in the comments which one you think is more likely what I would do in the meantime is I would just take the double zigzag count I will throw it into the larger count and I will call this one primary. I said I wasn't going to necessarily declare it, but I feel in order to protect myself from scorn, I've got to do the more reasonable thing. So I'm going to say, now why is that? That needs to be, that needs to be cycle wave, Thomas. And then I'll take the flat as an alternate 
even though it may be considered a little bit mental but I'm gonna keep it nonetheless all right then so that's PayPal we could bottom we could bottom any day now but we do have targets down here of uh, the golden ratio in log at 7318 we'll see if that holds it's got some structural support and then we've got the 89 fib further down the 61.8, I can't remember where that came to. Let's just have a double check of this final zigzag again. That was the... We'll use this tool. That's roughly over the 89. Okay, it's in 58, spot 83. So you've got some confluence between fib levels there. So maybe that's the one. If you come out of here flying in five ways and break this ridiculously powerful downward trend, you know, which we've been in the whole time, strong as anything... I think they've got a pitchfork here somewhere that I think holds it beautifully. There you go. Just like a pin pinball machine. Ding, 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 ding. Tagging the media line for one last finish. That could be nice. But either way, until this downward trend breaks and you get an impulsive move out the bottom and a shift, in a shift into positive momentum supporting it, you really are trying to catch a falling knife from a trading perspective. So there you go. And that's a... Uh, the trading perspective is always about risk management and you haven't really got any structural way of defining or containing risk at the moment. But from an investor's point of view, you know, don't turn your nose up at such a discount. All right, so that's PayPal. Okay, so let's come over now and have a look at Facebook. So the first thing I want to do, oops, is I'm just going to get a fib. And I'm just going to run it up to the highs. Just be precise, come in here and have a look. There we go, lock that in place. Okay, so now let's come off of log. Alright, so as you can see, the retracement here is nowhere near as severe. Nowhere near as severe. We're down 50%. We've retraced 50%, uh, a little bit more than 50%, not quite the golden ratio, got close to it, it's almost a 61.8%. Um, so, yeah, it's going to work out around 55% to the lows, 55.59 is what we've come back. Currently trading above that and have a more bullish count overall. Now that's enough, coming back 50%, giving back 50% of the entire rally since 2012. That's the way you got to look at it. That's half price from the highs. Okay, that could be enough, but it could come lower. Right, and therefore we're going to have two counts here to look at. So, next thing I would like to point out also is a similar volume structure. Here, with the higher reading in the volume. Click on the right thing, shall we? 188.12 million, you know, an average day being 13 million, 16 million. Stronger reading here of 100, but up here we've got 188 million. And that was a huge, huge um, capitulation moment. Then we had a, a bounce, and now we've had a lower low on declining volume. Right. Very similar setup to what we've seen in PayPal. So it could be done, it's just done earlier. And it does subdivide as a double zigzag again. We've got a zigzag here with a shorter C, then an X wave, which is itself is a zigzag, then one, two, break down gap in three, four, five into an A, expanding flat into a B, and then we've got five waves rushing down in a small and a much smaller C. Now, once again, synergistically, it's not very pretty. You know, we've got huge gaps in the chart, and we've got bad relationships, not bad relationships, but stre stretched relationships between. The, a, the A's and the C's of each zigzag, you know, with short C's in each one, longer A's in each one, I mean, I guess at least it's consistent. And if we look at it in log, we can see how we haven't really retraced much at all. If I just shift this fib over to the wave 4 retracement tool, we can see that it's 23.6% roughly we've come through that. Come to this visual point of control, there is a lot of structure around here, we can see if we zoom out for a minute. All the way back here is where the strongest volume profile is. But if we zoom in to include all of this area here, you can see we've got quite a sizable chunk in the volume profile 
node of volume around where we're finding support and that's because we've got all of this sideways chaff here around what I think is a larger wave 3, 4 okay now, let's, now that we've done that let's have a look at our RSI and our MACD as well so got to be careful how you read this because we haven't been languishing around the lows from neutral we've gone from low not quite overbought out of neutral territory back to oversold back to neutral territory so it's stronger RSI readings off of the bounce but this really doesn't support bullish divergences cleanly like if you see weak price action and then you come back into neutral and then you make a higher low and then you move into overboard that's a stronger signal overall that you've had but it is there nonetheless we've got lower lows and we've got higher lows so there's no arguing that it's just me being pedantic over the way i prefer to see it and then from that point we've had a bounce so really with the gap there we've got and this move up we can only really think of this as one and two at the moment potential trade setup unlike in paper where there is no potential trade setup there is potentially one here but uh, it's by no means ideal with the gaps everywhere and the volatility here but a uh, pretty strong reading off of the low here supported by volume right so if we look at the prior days here which was still bearish leading us lower the first move off of the low was supported here and here by volume right and then has since it started to decline corrective of a bullish move up possibly okay so this could be the low we do have some volume coming in that's capitulated we've got the divergence we've got a lot of things in place and i've got my discord open which is going to be annoying the hell out of you guys so let's quit that sorry about that i know that you're probably checking your own at the moment so let's just add in a little bit of extra detail something like that i'm not going to stress over it really and then one two three four five i could move out and say that's a diagonal say so that's this three-way swing there as a flat either way that's going to be the b-wave top if we're counting it like this down into c and then from there we've gone one and we've gone two so let's come in now and have a look at this shorter time frame get rid of our indicators for a moment assuming this is the low how could we observe this let's switch off the volume and vpvr as well get that out of the way could you argue that this is a diagonal with a throw over like that could it be one two three four and then a diagonal it doesn't subdivide cleanly as an impulse that much is for certain so it's not particularly nice to look at either way so really what you want to see here if we're going to call this a one is you're going to want a wave two retracement we're already at the 50 so if you get a reaction out of here five and three in a smaller time frame you've got a measurable amount of risk at that point between your entry and where your stop would be it's like eight percent it's like four percent less than four percent if you come down lower to the golden ratio and get a bounce that would look nicer it's still not a very convincing move off of the low structurally it doesn't appear like it could be much else other than a diagonal really with a little throw over at the top it's a matter of whether it subdivides correctly i'm not sure it will let's just assume that's the length of the three there and that's the four check that it's not it's more than one to one it's less than one to one it is so yes you could get a diag in here so i think that's really your best bet i think you'd have to go one two uh, that's a higher high no that's the higher high so that would have to be a b c three four five throw over of a wedge pattern diagonal wedge like that bringing you into a one looking for three ways back in the two preferably for that golden pivot okay. and then you've got a 
bullish entry there, haven't you? Off you go into a wave three. Um, come back into here, like we say, and then look for the SDS after that and try and try and get a uh, structural stop. That's how I would look to trade it off of the lows here. If you remember the Patreon, you know what I'm talking about. You can go and watch the videos in the education section, section talking about setting up trades like that. Either way, from an investor's point of view, long term, do you believe Meta as a network, as a social network, as a um, metaverse and all the other things going into the future is a value prospect at a 50% more than a 50% discount? I can't, I don't see why not, you know. If you want to add a little I wouldn't blame you it's all about how long it's all about time frame if you're trading this and you want to swing trade it over weeks or months and you've got to look for the correct setups to do it so you can manage risk if you want to hold this for years don't turn your nose up at 50% 50 percent off yeah, that's a different kind of risk <sighs> all right then so how are we looking elsewhere we've got way through all our EMAs massively so Huge, huge capitulation post death cross here, and yet the lows came in shortly afterwards, as they often do. But we did get, but it wasn't the low though; it wasn't the bottom. It came up and then came down one more time. Let's turn those off. We looked at the volume. We looked at the point of control. We looked at log and at linear retracements. Let's just remind ourselves we're at the fifty, aren't we? So how about we? Just put in, since it's so close, we'll put in that 61.8% retracement, that's in linear scale. Why won't it let me click on that? There we go. Right, maybe we click on the fifth. Whatever. That'll do, that's close enough. All right then, so now let's look at an alternative idea add all of this to the which have I got on here so I shouldn't really have that as the alternate should I we'll put all of this into the primary folder that just makes more sense okay so now second option is this corrective move is different so here's an alternative way of looking at it I can fill in the blanks as we go there we get 5 down into a 1 W X Y into a 2 uh, you could maybe wing it as a flat although it doesn't get an expansive C so that's a little odd then 1 2 and then one two in here quickly three four five three four five three four five and it's all been an a so obviously this is much more bearish because what this suggests is you have an a the b way bounce to close the gap cover the damage get a 50 percent retracement and then you get a c and this is going to come down way deeper okay either way whether this is done now, whether it's going to come a little a, a little later, this A wave is going to complete, and then there's going to be a significant bounce. And I would be looking to see this big gap in the chart repaired. Combine that with 50 to 61.8 percent retracement, 61 to the tick would cover the gap from where we are. Complete a B wave, and then you come down in a C wave, and you get a much much deeper correction. And that's really the only alternative I can see at the moment. Okay, we're either still we've either completed a double zigzag or we've got a little bit further to go to finish it. Or we have completed an A looking for a big B and a big C. Now this would be a much, much deeper correction. Very severe, easy giving up eighty to ninety percent or more of the of the overall value of the asset. So very extreme. But you know, cycle wave corrections are extreme. Uh, Amazon's first cycle wave correction gave up 94%. And now look at the thing. It's very difficult for people to imagine how things are going to move forward as the Elliott wave progresses over time. But the Elliott wave progress, uh, Elliot, the Elliott wave will progress over time on its path higher. 
uh, well, why and how we get up there, who knows? Who could have, I mean, at the time when Amazon collapsed, when it was just a book company in the early dot com bubble and it gave up 94%, people could not imagine it becoming a worldwide retail you know, monopoly, and yet it did. But it was all written on the chart after going 1, 2, we were going to go 3, 4, 5 at a larger time frame. So that's Facebook for the moment. We've got a reaction off of the low. We've got to move up and move back. It could be 1, 2. We don't have that presently in PayPal. So there is a trade potential here coming off of that low where there isn't currently in PayPal. Not by the way I would go about things anyway. So let's now look at the last of the big sellers. And this is Baba. Then we'll come and have a look at Tesla, which is behaving a little differently from the other two. Right. So what have we got here? It's the same old story, except the, the correction's even more severe. Here in Baba, we've got, in price terms, to the low, 77% sell-off. Big move. Now, I can't give you, because of the way I've jigged account here, which I'm not honestly 100% happy with, I am I could quite happily, and I think it would only be fair for me to put the 1 and the 2 in the place of this intermediate 1, 2, then change this to be the intermediate wave here. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. Because I feel taking the 1 and the 2 down to here is taking a liberty. Because I, I can't call a swing down as a corrected two. We go from a price perspective going beyond where the one began. So yeah. it's a problem. You only get the uh, you only get the information from the moment the stock goes public. Right? You're not getting private trading data here. That's the ABC for the four. That means the five's got to move up a tad into a minor wave here. Everything's got to be rejigged around this wave structure here, so that becomes three and four, and then the minute wave will now be in there. So that adjusts that. Either way, let's just get the low at the low. If that makes sense. Let's find out what that absolute low is. Assuming that all the price data into a fifth wave high is here and present, even though it really does look a bit dodgy. To be honest with you, disproportionately sized wave four, but it is a triangle. We can make it work as a triangle, but it doesn't half look a little odd. It doesn't look as bad in log. Granted, it looks a bit better. Yeah, we can say with log one, two, three, four, five. Let's just move that over a little bit. That's not a terrible looking impulse wave. Right, but if we look at it in linear, this is why I wanted to use that initial pivot, but it is cheating. Essentially, I'm making an assumption that I shouldn't really be allowed to make. One, two, if we look at it in linear, all of a sudden it doesn't look as tasty. That's a very long and drawn out way for, but that's okay. Still, it's okay. It's not breaking any rules. All right, so cycle wave one again. Now, you could, since we're only coming up since September 2015 rather than 11 or 12, you could argue that this is primary degree, but I'm going to say cycle because of the severity of the correction again. If what you don't do in price, you do in time. We haven't done it in time, so we've done it in price. And what we got here was some pretty badass volume around the lows, the recent lows. We haven't shrundled off to a lower low yet, which we would, which we would have done, which we did do in PayPal and Facebook. Now, we don't have to do the same thing because we had a pretty strong spike of volume here before we finally capitulated. That could be a more traditional low where the peak volume is on the low. Okay. Strong move off. No doubt. Move back. This could be 1, 2, 1, 2. It could be 1, A, B, C into 2 or it's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lower. Again. Either way, I've got it currently subdividing as a triple zigzag a b c x a b c x a b c it's a little tricky to get it divided as anything else to be honest and you can't possibly suggest that it's an 80 percent set off as an a and then a b because c is taking us to zero 
So I'm not calling it a single zigzag. I think it is a triple zigzag of some sort. Maybe it's a double, maybe you can count it either way. Same rules apply, or same ideas apply. You know, long term, if you want exposure to Baba or a lot of Chinese stocks at the moment, which have been getting wrecked, if you think there's long term value to be had with these sell offs, you add them to a long term portfolio and you take an investor's approach to this. If you're looking for a trade, there is a potential setup here. We'll come in and have a look, but it's getting weaker. Now we have a gap off of the low, so maybe we were just trying to repair the damage done to the chart before moving on. That would be the bullish way of looking at it. Bearish way is we've been pulled back into that gap and we'll now head lower. So, all right, either way, let's have a look at the RSI here. So, going into the lows, we've had a row of higher lows. Bum, bum, bum. And then the MACD between this low, is that low higher? No, I don't think it is. This low and this low. So essentially from here to here and from here to here, we were setting lower lows in price while setting higher lows, slightly higher lows in the RSI and in the MACD. Now on the weekly time frame, let's have a look. We get the same divergence, low and higher low over the same period so essentially there's no difference here it's not the strongest divergence i've seen on the rsi but it is present not surprising bears getting a little exhausted having pushed so far down here volume on the day see this is a different kind of um this is a massive move up supported by volume rather than a capitulation day supported by volume so it could be a temporary rally in that sense but it is strong, 159.834 million done in a day. This is the day time frame. Right, so what have we retraced? Now we've said we got, did I bring up a fib? Have I got a fib here? Yeah, so through the golden ratio by a long way. And log scale, we're at we went to we went to the eighty nine, not quite the eighty nine. Came through the seventy eight six in log in linear we came through the eighty nine percent retracement. So almost we we went over ninety percent retracement here of this whole move up. Right. That is a big sell off. <laughs> State the obvious. And we're, we're very close to the all-time low, so any break of these lows and all of this is nonsense, right? Because none of it is applicable to being a 1-2 anymore. It's something else, and it's not very good news in that sense. So keeping our fingers crossed that we get a bounce before we take out those lows, this could have been it. So let's come on to the smaller time frame for a minute and zoom in down here. Come on to the, let's come down to the one hour. Okay, tricky to dig out an impulse in here, oh, very messy, look at it in line, that could be one, two, three, four, and then what's this, see so it's not clear either way, big gaps. Now we came down to fill this gap. Well, now hang about a minute. That's not that's not a bad thing. We filled the gap down with a retracement, right? But we've still got this gap, which is the bullish gap, right? Which is open. Came off of the lows back, and we've left this gap slightly open. So that could be gap and go, right? It's possible. We've come back into it though, so that's good. you could argue that's good enough because we've fully closed this gap here. So the way you'd have to look at this bullishly would be one, this is two, and then we've got one and two again. So at the moment, this if you were to take this trade, 
There's no guarantees ever that this is right, but we're talking about managing risk. You're not going to get much tighter than that. Okay. Pre-market, we're trading slightly higher today, so maybe that's bottomed. <laughs> maybe. And uh, what we'd be looking at here, this is a hell of a retracement. Straight to the 89%. So if you've taken this trade on the lows yesterday as a 1-2, you've got 3.39% to the stop. That's not bad for what is essentially buying the bottom of the stock, is it? Now you might get a, another bite of a cherry anyway, because let's see what comes out of here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, C. This could be 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. So you might get another chance here. Okay, but long term again, there's a lot of value here. If you're if you're that way inclined, could go to zero. That's always a risk, guys. We're just talking probabilities, rational, rational investing. Now, from a trading perspective, one two, one two. That's pretty tight. If you wanted to take that now, I don't know where it's going to open today. Obviously, if it opens all the freaking way up here, opportunity lost in the short term, at least. A one two one two that is literally we can't say five up and three back cleanly that's unfortunate because of the structure but it's all about risk that could be counted as five that can be counted as three that can be five that can be three and off you go and you've got this tiny little area here as your margin of risk which is a structural measurable area of risk okay. alternatively that was corrective. It looks a little extreme to be a free wave correction. You normally expect to see something like that if you're going to correct, but you know, that does also look like it could be impulsive, right? There's no overlap. So that could be one, two, three, four. And we're just going one, two, three, four. And we're going to come down lower again. And this is the final leg of a C, five and a C. Anyway, there you go. That's how I see. Um, bar bar for the moment. Let's just come up and have a look at what this other corrective idea was. Other okay, I did manage to get a single zigzag in here. Right. I'm not 100% sure if it's done. Yeah, we could move everything back, but you can't go beyond this $57 point. All right, so we're pretty darn close as it is. Okay, you could argue that maybe the five is here and it's just above it. And we've got three and four down here, and this is one, two, three, four, five, one final move lower. In an absolutely gigantic C. Where the counterpart is all the way back up here. A B huge extension in the C. I'd rather break it down as multiple zigzags than have such a huge C. Yeah. Let's have a look. That's 1.618 and a bit more. It's not it's not horrible. It's a long C, but it's totally believable. Right, so take it back. It looks a bit more severe than I thought it did. In which case, we could put the 5 down here. This would have to be rejigged to be the 3 and the 4. You see what I'm doing. I'm just basically progressing the count down to get one extra sub wave in, right? 1, 2, 1, 2. Yeah, and then we can get a sub-minute wave in there. One, two, three, four, five, and that fills out the gap. And now you've pushed it down one more move to make this one, two, three, four, five. But it could be one, two, one, two, and off we go. If it breaks the low down here, okay, and the count where the trade idea I was talking about is only valid above eighty-one eighty. Which is very close, isn't it? Right. Breaks that. You got your structural, you know, your low here. It could be a D. It could be an A, B, very short C, and then you get a bounce. But my God, you are retracing a hell of a lot there at that point, more than you would expect to. Okay. If that goes, you've got one chance to get a fifth and final wave in. In a, in, an all, in a fifth of an almighty C, right before the start of the all-time low of the market, to turn this thing around before you take out the, the permanent lows. 
at which point none of this count is really valid at that point okay so we'll leave Baba there um, like I said I've shown you a potential trade down there we have had a bounce this is more similar to Facebook with the way it's actually bounced and let's come over and have a look at Tesla okay right let's go with what have we got going on here and primary okay so let's just zoom in for a minute now this one's relatively simple in the shorter term at least bringing us up to the top of the market we've currently had a sell-off from the previous highs to where we are to 35.98 percent 36 to yesterday's close 43 to the lows right. now it looks ridiculous in comparison to the pace of Facebook or PayPal or whatever or Baba for that to represent 40 odd percent but that's just how extreme that way free rally was in um, Tesla is absolutely absolutely ridiculous so I've got a couple of ways of interpreting this volume has been dropping off the whole time we haven't seen any kind of capitulation in to signal a low here in the volume but if we're not in a larger correction that would make sense that instead we're going one two and we're still within a larger wave so we don't need to see that so as I have this currently is I have primary three into four as a triangle and instead of calling this the fifth of a larger top like I've done with everything else which it could be I've called this a one of a lesser degree intermediate degree so what I'm saying is we're going into a fifth wave extension fifth wave extension for Tesla now is there an argument to support that structurally yes there is that could be uh, you know an extended fifth wave if you're going to have two extended waves it will be the third and it will be the fifth but we don't know how big the fifth is going to be we know that the third was definitely extended but you will never have one and five extend but three and five can extend it's a little rare but it can happen I'm sure you could come up with fundamental reasons you know if oil continues to climb and climb and climb and climb and climb and climb and climb um, over the next few years a fifth wave extension in the commodities market driver driven on fear could be driving the mass adoption of Tesla vehicles you know uh, in a fifth wave extension here I don't know that's all hypothetical hyperbole so let's not go crazy what I will say is we have a nice simple uh, invalidation point here at 700 bucks to the tick right, so one two one two this is your five up your three back your five up your three back STS trade here with your pitchfork and over 61.8 percent retracement 78 to the tick currently trading slightly higher in the pre-market giving you to the low here without another five wave and three wave move back in 11 percent structural stop off of there that's just down to the volatility of this asset okay how far it can move and how fast it can move you're not obligated to take that not by any means you could wait for another impulsive move up and corrective move back and you can close it down to this stop Okay, you could do the same again we don't know if this is a fifth wave extension we don't know if the third within the fifth will be extended it doesn't look like it's the one if this is minor degree so it could be the fifth of the fifth I haven't got a clue all I know is that it's all invalid if we go below this 700 point here right. unless it's a larger correction and that's what we're going to talk about next so in the meantime one two one two within the fifth wave extension this is valid until you take out 700 so let's change that count and look at an alternate okay so this is an idea that like I said we can look at this in a couple of different ways I think I've got one more which counts this as the top yeah we'll look at that as well this is the idea that this correction isn't done okay so I think when I look at this that I see a flat here let me show you what I mean three ways into an A three ways into a B coming up to 90% then five ways down in a C that feels like a flat to me that does now in my previous count one two 
Right, that's a flat ABC and it's complete. But what if it's a flat of a larger correction? Okay, that's what we're considering here. That it's ABC, a flat into C. Zigzag for an X wave here, is irrelevant relative to the larger correction. And then this could be a zigzag. Flat next flat connected to a zigzag. So you could have one, two, I'm not sure you could get three, four in here yet. Maybe you could. Three, four, five. And this could be A, B, C, coming down deeper. Now this same corrective idea we're going to put together. We're going to just call it. I'll just call it correction for the moment. And where does that belong to then? Inside of the alternate. Let's drag that out and put it into there. Okay, am I going mad? Or is that? Oh, it's because I've still got that switched on. There we go. So we're either three to four at primary degree, and I've counted this. Sorry, pop that in place. I've counted this differently to the high. One, two, three, four, five. One, two back here. That's much more fleshed down the previous count. It doesn't matter here. Three, four, five into three. This will be a combination into a four, which should, in theory, take us back into the prior wave four. So into this territory here which we're already in zigzag so it could be one two one two or we could have any finish anywhere in this box and come down in a zigzag now like this perhaps and that's a flat into a zigzag all right that's one way of looking at it alternatively we have a top here primary top could be a cycle wave top, could be a primary top, whatever. And then we're going to do the same thing. Our correction is going to be a deeper correction. Now, this is slightly different because this doesn't have to come back into the prior wave 4. Right? Because it's not a wave 4. So we're not expecting it to terminate within the wave 4 of the previous degree. So if this is a larger cycle wave correction, <coughs> or, or primary wave correction, uh, well... <laughs> It could come down very, 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 very deep. We don't know. The flat could be the last vestiges of the market trying to hold the highs. And then the zigzag could be capitulation. And just absolutely implode. That's possible. This here could be an extension. One, two, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, A, B, C. It could be that bad. It can get that, it could get that nasty. Okay, so not much I can do about that really at the moment. I don't think there's much point revisiting this unless this primary count breaks down. If 700 breaks down, this structure is the one we're interested in. How is this developing? Is it 1, 2, 1, 2? Or does it go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, and then we get some kind of retracement? If you get a retracement out of here, you're either looking at an impulse as part of a free going higher and it will take out this high and these highs, or you're looking at a retracement before going lower. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and then we continue and we break this. That's really the, best, the only way I can really look at it at the moment. We're so far up, we're so high up, and there's nothing below us. That's the problem when you do such an enormous rally. Those of you who are crypto enthusiasts, myself included, will appreciate these kind of market structures that when you come up here in, in such a hurry, there is nothing to support you if you break down. Right? There's these tiny little nodes of tradable volume, but there's very little else going on until you get all the way back to the beginning of the eruption. So, for the meantime, we're still bullish. And we're still holding this level. If you break this level, well then you've got to start asking questions about what you're doing on the longer term. You know, because if we take, I mean, what can we do here to try and get some kind of structure around this? A one and a two. There's an argument for having finished. Uh, 
that's the three and the four. That could be all of the three in one go, or it could be the top of the market in a one. Got a parallel channel there as well, containing all of the price, finishing within it, and now drifting out of it. That could be the start of something very, very nasty. But you're not going to know until you break that low. If it's really just start to plummet, we can look for a much, much deeper correction in Tesla. If we turn around before that 700 level and push higher, that extended fifth wave, none of this structure is going to matter. Right. There's no reason it should. If you look at how ridiculous that move is, well, let's come off of log just to remind ourselves. Right? How do you get any kind of useful structure around this? You can't. You see how there's just nothing below you? So Tesla's very much, in, and it has been the whole time it's been extending, it's very much been in a situation where it's either got to pushing, it's got to keep pushing higher, or it's going to fucking implode. Okay, it's a very much all or nothing technical setup this is. Okay. And for the meantime, it can keep pushing higher, but if it does break any of this shorter term support, then there's not much below us and there's not much below us to catch us. Okay, and that's just that's just the way it is. That's what happens when you get these kind of massive moves. Now, you could look back at this in years to come. That's the thing. We don't know how big Tesla is going to get. You could look back at this in years to come. You could have a huge correction like this and then carry on massively to higher pricing. And it could just be a little blip in the history of Tesla. Okay. But it would have felt enormous at the time. All right. Now, let's have a look at RSI. Now, what you can see here, which also supports the idea that we're in a larger correction rather than an impulsive move. Let's have a look between these. Was that a swing high? No, but actually this came back to 90%. I thought this peaked to a higher high, but it didn't. So what I was about to say is irrelevant because I was about to point out negative divergence, but it's not present because this is a lower high. So don't worry about that. Into oversold conditions here. No bullish divergence to speak of. There was some into the lows. No, there wasn't. It was supported. Excuse me. There was here at the lows. There you go. And that final move for bullish divergence announcing that this rally was going to begin. It's not the most convincing picture currently. How are we with our moving averages? We've just broken the 250 day exponential moving average again. We rallied from below it before. Yeah, it's it's in a bit of a delicate position at the moment. I've been I've always struggled with my analysis on Tesla. Um, if you go back ages, you'll see that how try to be on the side of the balls, but I, I every time we push up to a new high, we end up with a very delicate kind of setup, which could either explode again, as it has done, or it could just in, implode. So I hope you've got something out of that for the primary for the count at the moment. Primary count, we're extending into a fifth wave. And the 700 level is the one that you don't want to break if you're bullish. If that breaks, we can come back and consider this either being a more complex correction or we can consider a, a much more severe breakdown in price to come. All right, then, we'll leave it there, guys. I think not a bad day. Um, if you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed what you've seen, please feel free to subscribe, smash the like, hit the little bell notification icon to remain informed of future video releases. Feel free to leave us a comment in the comment section below. And as always, a huge thank you to my Patreon subscribers. Um, your support is greatly appreciated. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, maybe attending that live stream tomorrow, if you get in today, you'll have time to do it. And uh, if you are interested in doing that, head over to the Patreon page by following the link in the description box below. Have a read of the various tiers and consider signing up. All right, guys, take care of yourselves, and I will be back with you shortly. All the best. Bye-bye.